This is Dean Myers from VizWorld, and I'm visiting with Kelly Gaither, the Principal Investigator and Tax Director of Visualization. And let me tell you that Tax stands for Texas Advanced Computing Center at the University of Texas at Austin. And recently, um, I received notification that TAC was deploying Maverick. And so rather than me trying to explain what all of these code words mean, I'm going to ask Kelly to give us a little bit of explanation about Maverick and what it does and who it's for. And hopefully it will be for somebody interested in data visualization out of our readership in VizWorld. So Kelly, please tell me about Maverick. Hi. Thank you so much for coming out today. So Maverick is a, a next generation remote and interactive visualization and data analysis resource. So we've been doing remote and interactive visualization since about 2004. And one of the things that I can tell you, I don't know that we know how to do it 100% right, but we can certainly tell you uh, areas to avoid. And I think we've been getting better and better and better at this over the years. Maverick was deployed uh, for production on March 3rd. And it is uh, co in collaboration with NVIDIA and HP. So we have been in the business of sort of designing and deploying these big remote visualization resources. Uh, where people can just sit down and they can take advantage. It's almost like having a giant supercomputing uh, capability with a front-end laptop sort of interface. So it feels like they're at their desktop or laptop, um, but it's got the power of a supercomputing center or supercomputer at the back end. Very interesting. And who are the users of this, um, both locally and remotely? So locally, we have a variety of users that range anywhere from researchers in ISIS, the Institute for Computational Engineering Sciences, to the biological sciences, to the humanities as well. So we have a real diverse set of users here at UT Austin. Um, in our national users are really the national open science community. So those are dictated by the National Science Foundation. Maverick is a part of the Exceed project. And as such, we deploy this nationally to the open science community. And those researchers range from large scale cosmology, turbulent flow simulations, global weather forecasting. So really kind of the grand challenge type problems that you see happening across the nation. Do you find that has, or will Maverick allow potentially greater collaboration between, let's say, distinct or siloed um, um, groups or organizations that would love to have the resources? Yeah, that's the hope. So in, in addition to providing the remote and interactive capability, we also provide a collaborative capability so that people who are not geographically co-located can really be looking at and interacting with the same so they're, they're interacting with this data through these visualizations and they're really doing it together, trying to figure out sort of the knowledge discovery bits or the information that's really sort of trapped in these very large data sets. Well, so speaking of uh, the data that's trapped and the idea of visualization, I had asked you off camera earlier a little bit about the idea of where the data comes from, who owns the data, what it's... Um, what's the style of formatting that's preferred so perhaps if you talk a little bit about that yeah that's a that's a tough subject so that's a multi-pronged subject um here's how i will answer that so oftentimes we have a very large viz group here at ut austin at tac and the reason being because a lot of these scientists really don't want to learn the vernacular that goes along with the visualization language and they they aren't always very well versed in sort of the visual design principles. And in order to make an effective visualization, you really do have to be part creative, part visual designer, and then, and then part scientist as well. You have to bridge the gap between sort of that information that's trapped in that scientific data set and, and the way we portray it or communicate it. So Viz is really a, an important means of communication. The way visualization is evolving, I think we've, you know, it had its roots in scientific visualization, and then shortly after that came what we would call information visualization, which really deals with 
the abstract data, financial data, for example. And now we're evolving into this era of what we would call visual analytics, where the scientists can sit down and have a combination of data analysis tools with the visualization and the visual design tools to make an effective visualization, to really interact with the data barrier free. I think that's probably the direction that we're going here at TAC. Most of what we try to do is we try to remove the barriers for those scientists. We really, you know, sometimes it's the interface tools, sometimes it's just the language that the application speaks, but then sometimes it's really just giving them some creative hints for how to communicate this data to themselves, to their collaborators, and then to their funding agencies more broadly. With respect to who owns the data, we take the we, we actually take the tack that that the scientist owns the data. We don't own that data. So sometimes the data is simulated, more often than not, because we, we do come from a supercomputing center in which lots of people do simulations. But sometimes the data is measured. So we have, for example, electron microscopy scientists that measure the data and then transfer it over to do the interactive analysis. Um, but as far as who owns that data, it's really the scientist. It's the person who either measured it or simulated it. And, and we oftentimes, almost always, work collaboratively with them to get imagery that they approve of before we even show it to anybody else. That's very interesting and, and very important and a wonderful feature that, that there is some sort of leadership or guidance about what makes a good visualization, what makes it effective and useful. Um, Within the press release that I read and will probably be accompanying the, the, this video, uh, there's talk about Stockyard. I may ask you to speak up a little bit about that. Yeah, so Stockyard is a 20 petabyte shared file system, and it is it is a not a new approach globally, but it is a new approach for TAC in that we have one big shared file system in Stockyard in which all these other resources connect to it. So it really is just the mantra of the data gets put somewhere once and everything else moves back to where that data lives. It allows you to avoid making multiple copies of data sets, um, really for the sake of, it, it, it's really a cleaner management style. So everything is connected to these single copies of these data sets and, and we can do different things with it. So if we have to do very large number crunching, well then we can do that with one of our HPC machines. But if we want to do interactive analysis, then we can do that with something like Maverick. That's great. Um, so this leads me to the question, so the Stockard approach, which is essentially the filing system, is that proprietary or are going to using the open source mantra of using various tools to, to manage? Yeah, so we, we do often use primarily open source tools. Occasionally we do use commercial tools. With respect to Stockyard, it is a Lustre parallel file system, so that's really the way, that really enables us to get the data on and off of that particular file system very rapidly. So for example, if you're gonna do interactive analysis and it takes two hours to load in the data set, that's not terribly interactive. So we wanna have very fast access mechanisms. Um, with respect to actually, you know, tools managing the data set once the data is on the file system, we primarily go with open source for a couple of reasons. One, we don't have a very large software budget um, so that so it's more need based, but also we are developers in a lot of these open source tools. So, for example, in Hadoop and in um, iRods and in even the visualization tools, Visit and Paraview, we do develop some tools and techniques and then put them back into that open source repository. We're a big believer in open source as much as possible. Well, that was going to lead me to my next question, which is almost a trick question, and I hope it's not a trick question, but um, passion projects. Are there any passion projects that are going on within all of this that you're so excited about or that really um, are uh, your, your, your special children? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, a couple. Um, and I would say that TAC has really been focused on impact-centric projects. So while I will never cure cancer directly, <laughs> I can perhaps be a part of helping someone to cure cancer. And for me personally, I have evolved from 
computational fluid dynamics, which I'm still very passionate about. And CFD is a part of everything, turbulent flow. I'm particularly passionate about keeping those airplanes in the sky. But, but I'm also, I've gotten sort of a new interest in the bioinformatics and the biological sciences. So I think there's a lot of good that we can do to help these scientists see some of these things that are locked in these biological data sets, whether they're gene sequencing, whether it's imaging the electron microscopy, the CAT scans, or whether it's really just sort of looking at um, clinical data and helping to do human-centric management of, of medical issues. Well, that's going to lead me to a side question, having just <coughs> spent some time with the Center for Data Innovation uh, in Washington, D.C. They had a Data Innovation Day, and there was a lot of conversation uh, regarding um, the world of health and healthcare, yeah. where um, uh, ownership and sharing of data is potentially, and probably will, move more and more to the patient, to the client, right. and tie that with the Internet of Things, where we have so many more sensors that can give us data. Um, will Maverick be able to manage, participate, would you like that to happen, do you think? Yeah, so we just recently met with MD Anderson as a center um, and through the XSEED project as well. And we, you know, the barrier there with us being able to participate directly would be more compliance issues because that patient-centric data is private and it has to be very secure. And there are a lot of um, protocols that go with that. We are in the process of a, as a center of becoming compliant with respect to that. And I, I hope and pray actually that Maverick will be a part of that. Um, I, I do anticipate within the next year that TAC will be participating um, in some of these HIPAA compliant projects with MD Anderson and with other institutions. So that would lead me to now back to a first question or rather our part of the first part of our discussion which was about helping in the guidance of good data visualization and now you're doing it with the scientific community is it also part or or could it be part of your mandate that that would then extend to a larger, uh, less knowledgeable public which doesn't know necessarily how to interpret data, even visually presented data? Yeah, so we do, we, we do a lot of that now. So there's sort of a mantra of I see, we see, they see. So I see would be visualizations that I create for myself, typically um, less beautiful, less exquisite, little less details because I really know what's going on. We see would be I'm communicating with a group of my collaborators and we while we still know the subject, I do oftentimes have to bridge the gap between the different disciplines that are part of that collaboration group. And then the they see would be the lay public. So I want to put enough context, I want to put I want to really make this visualization compelling. I want to draw them in. I want them to pay attention. Once they pay attention, I want them to be able to comprehend what I'm trying to communicate. That's where we really pull out all stops. That's where the design principles are so critical. Um, we do have some visual design people who are formally trained in visual design and the visual arts on staff in, in the visualization group here at TAC because we do feel like those formal design principles and then the artistic principles are so critical to being able to make effective visualizations. Um. Are there any type of visualizations that you're favoring, and by that I mean we'll call them potentially either static or three-dimensional, or are you, are you looking into having more interactivity part of that ability so that, so that even within the visualization it's not a single image that it really can be manipulated once you've come to how to interpret the data? Yeah, so we've done interactive visualization from the very beginning. So I believe that interaction is one of those necessary parts um, for really uh, interpreting the data. So I can, I can make a static image and convey or communicate something completely differently with one image versus just rotating it around. Um, you need to really have the ability to interact with the data and to interact with the visualizations um, to make, to really effectively understand what's, what that data, what's trapped inside that data, the information that's really in there. So interaction has always been a, a critical part of what we do. Great. Um, I have come to basically the end of my questions. Are there things that I didn't mention that you would like to share? 
Um, just that we're very excited about deploying Maverick, and I think we are going to continue to push the envelope with respect to remote and collaborative visualization. We're going to continue to push the envelope with respect to interaction techniques as well. So we understand that the interaction with this data is the single largest barrier with being able to understand it. So we do that with our remote and collaborative visualization resources, and we also are very passionate about uh, visualization laboratories. Great, I wanna thank you so much for your time. And uh, I wanna thank also um, all of you who've been watching, and hopefully you would get a chance to come down and take a look uh, and potentially participate in person with this uh, tremendous installation and resource. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.